If you look at if you look at Apple products versus say Dell or Hewlett Packard or whatever, right? Um, just you have a, 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 a why do you buy Dell over just a PC? Because everyone else has one. All right, good. That is a very good answer because everyone else had one. Now, why do you think so many people buy Apple products, whether it's yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Lifestyle, lifestyle, good, yeah. Image, image, yeah. They don't break. They don't break. Okay, good. And also, they kind of synced everything to work together. So yeah. there's Apple this, there's Apple that. So it's kind of mm -hmm. it's a conscious, it's like loyalty. They're all they're loyal. Okay, good. Yeah. They're beautiful products. Okay, good. Marketing. Sorry. Marketing. Marketing, good. Right. So nobody says they have a really fast processor. The screen is built with this particular material, um, the keyboard lights up, or... We girls. Yeah. Right, no, but, but the majority of people, Pretty. you will say, even, is it Sam? Good, I got the name right, tell them the names, it's going to be a great year. Um, even he said they don't, they don't break, but he doesn't know why they don't break, it's just, it's just the effects, they just don't break, right? So, the point is, what Apple's done, and you said it's beautiful, what Apple have done is, we buy their products based on how we feel about them, it's as simple as that. Yeah? We're not buying it because technically they're any better than anything else. Yeah? It is it is a benefit, not a feature. Yes, Joy. Is that different for men? Because I think we buy emotionally. Look, um, I remember the first time I was saying to someone earlier on, the first time I saw an iPod was about I don't know, eleven years ago, something like that. And it was a colleague at work and he said, Julian, I've just got an iPod. I said, that's great, so I'm gonna bring it in. He brought it in in the box. Now, the reason why he brought it in in the box is because he wanted to show me the box. <laughs> right? And he said, Jimmy, look at the way the box opens. Look at the packaging in the box. It had nothing to do with the function of this bloody iPod. It was, you know, the box looked so grey. He was turning the box upside down. I'm looking at him like, you're crazy. But he was really excited. And the way it made him feel. And, you know, it was hard not to be infected by how he felt about this product, right? And in doing so, he was evangelizing Apple's products. Yeah? Jessica said she bought one because everybody else has one. So she is a result of those evangelists. Yeah? Now, um, when you look at an, an advert for Apple, right, they're not talking about the features of their product. They're saying, learn a new language. Learn to play the piano. Enjoy time with your family. Take pictures of your children. It's all on lifestyle stuff. Social media is the perfect place to get that message across, yeah? Because if somebody just buys an iPod or an Apple Mac and they're having a great experience with it, a lot of people who are active on social media, they'll tweet it, they'll put a picture up of their new Apple thing, or, you know, even when I got my iPhone 5, I opened it and said, just got my iPhone 5, right? I just tweeted it, bloody ridiculous, but I did. So what I'm suggesting is not to use social media to talk about the features of what it is that you're doing, but talk about the benefits of what it is you're doing. So on social media, what you're doing is you're having conversations with people. If Sam, you know, was at a party that had a conversation with somebody, he was just talking about the ingredients that was in the shampoo. He would rather say, we had a client who had a really great experience with us, yeah? That's probably a better leading conversation to have than to talk about, you know, the ingredients necessarily in the shampoo, because that shampoo, there would be lots of competitors who would have the same ingredients. But the competitors can't talk about the experience that one of Sam's customers had in this establishment because that is unique to, to this establishment, right? So you need to fight the fight that you think you can win. And normally those things are the things that are unique to what it is that your business does that you know other businesses can't do. And oftentimes that is built, off, that is built around the experiences. If you analyze what happens across social media, people talk about their experiences, the way they feel about things, the way the, the reactions and their experiences with companies, good or bad. So the first thing somebody's had a bad experience with a the company, they will go out and vent it on Twitter or vent it on Facebook. And they'll do that because they know they'll get support from it. Oh, somebody had a bad day, oh that's terrible, I had KFC with a brain in it too. You know, all this kind of stuff will happen, right? And similarly, if you have a good experience, you want to share it. And we all know, if you want to amplify your voice and share a good experience that you've had, an easy way to do that is through social media. So the question is, are your businesses benefiting from that type of exposure?